Right, this is the next series in this uh, bartender UID template um, video tutorial I'm trying to do. And I'm going to do at least two more here. This one's going to talk more about um, creating filters within bartender to prevent uh, one from introducing errors into the data syntax uh, for a UID. And we're going to have another one at the end is talking about how to create uh, data input forms for manual entry or for connecting to an external database. We'll do that in a separate video. This one is uh, going to start again with the uh, label that we made in the previous video. And as I'm going to try to scan it into this text file here with my, I'll just scan it right off the screen with my barcode OS enabled um, reader. And as I do that, you'll see it, if you, I don't know if you could hear it, but it, it would be once indicating a good mark. And here are the unprintable characters, the ASCII record separator, group separator, and end of transmission. And the, uh, the other issue here is figuring out um, what happens when you introduce an error. Uh, so let's say we made a mistake and we made the cage code only four characters instead. What would happen then? And if I change that there uh, and try to scan this off the screen again, I'll get an error report that comes out of my scanner indicating that, hey, you know, you got to have um, five characters here. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see the full report. Length has to be five. Okay, and so this error report coming out of the Barcode OS scanner will help you identify how to fix the issue. Um, now, it wouldn't it be even better if we could actually put something in Bartender so that you couldn't make that mistake? And the answer is yes, and of course, I'm going to show you how to do that. So remember, our text and our barcode are tied together through the use of these internal variable names that Bartender offers. And let's go into any one of these little data fields here. This is for the data matrix code. And, you know, I've got to fix that first. So let's go ahead and make that five characters. Now, how do I get Bartender to force that? Now, there's a transforms um, tab here. And if you look at this, you can say character filter. And that character filter can allow you to do numeric, hex, mixed, it can also allow you to do a regular expression or a custom filter. Uh, either one of these two actually works really well. I'll do custom. Uh, actually, let's do let's do custom first. And if we look at what we're allowed to do for a um, for a cage code, it can be any number zero through nine, and it can has to be uppercase. That's the other thing. So we're going to click that, and then we can put in um, any letter except I and O. Okay, so those are all of the allowed characters um, for a cage code. And so there, now we can't create, if we type in a lowercase, it'll convert it to uppercase. If we type in something that's a comma or a colon or even an I or an O, um, it will not let us do that. And um, number of characters, I could also go down here and I could say, I want you to require five and I want you to limit it to five. And I want you to pad it with a zero on the left if I don't do it properly, right? So that's uh, another way of creating a second rule by which you can never make a mistake here, right? So if I go in here now and I, I'll just, I'm gonna save these things so that I don't, um, here I'll do, um, okay. So now let's go ahead and see if we can change this again. I'll go here. Let me see if I can add more characters here. And what happens if I try to do that? They don't show up. It doesn't allow me to put in more than five. Let's try that edit again. Let's go down here and let's just put in four characters. One, two, three, four. Okay, what happens now? It puts a zero in front. 
So there's some really interesting things that you can do with the filters in, bar, in, in, uh, in Bartender to prevent yourself from creating a UID that is illegal. Now, it may not be what you want. If you wanted to type in five characters and you just forgot, it pads it with a zero. Maybe that's not what you want, but at least it will conform to the syntax requirements of MIL standard 130, and in this case, the ATA spec 2000 rules for aerospace. All right, so there's another option I wanted to show you here, and that would be to look at, and let's do it with the part number one this time. For character filter, I can combine number of characters and character filter into one filter by using a regular expression. Now, you may not be familiar with regular expressions. Uh, that's okay. Um, you can look it up, Google it if you want to test it a little bit more. But uh, the point is you can create a more compact um, rule here. And I want to create, this is going to be a part number that's going to be Let's say um, starting at um, uh, zero and up to 15 characters long. And I can also include a hyphen character in this standard. So I'll do hyphen, zero through nine, A through Z. Oh, I can't do A through Z because there's also a rule saying I can't use O's. So I'm going to do A through N, sorry, capital, sorry. And then I will do P through Z. And you know what? I'm just going to delete the lowercase and I'll say convert to uppercase here. Now, if I want to test, I can type in anything here and I get to 15 characters and it stops. So that part's working. And if I type in uh, lowercase letters, um, they become uppercase letters. So that part's working. I can type in a a dash, that's fine. Now, if I try to type in, uh, let's say, a um, slash character, I can't. If I try to put in a parenthesis, I can't. If I try to do an underscore or a space, I can't. So this filter is going to protect me pretty well for creating a valid part number. Um, and so if I try to do that here again, let's see, double click and data source and let's just put in a whole bunch of things super long right now hit that and it should come back and say you can't do that oh it didn't now isn't that interesting so perhaps i didn't create my filter correctly let's do one to 15. Let's see if it actually, if I try to do a print preview, will it catch it there? Yep. It pads that. And it didn't it didn't meet this regular expression, so it's going to say no. Okay. Um, we're going to show you another way of doing this in the next video uh, with a manual data input field that will block this so you don't even get this to this far in your mess. Um, anyway, so that in a nutshell is how you can add character filters and number of characters or combine them in a regular expression if you want and force this, um, this um, UID barcode to conform to the, um, the AT or the MIL standard without giving you an error option. Now we'll do a second video on filters to dive down into some additional options which may be of interest to you.